start recording this, man. Yeah, so okay. big car coming up October 29th. But the question yeah. is, I know I've been you've been doing a lot in Atlantic City, man. What what brings you a little south for the of, of Atlantic City? <clears throat> um, so obviously, you know, a lot of people know like me and Dusty's backstory, you know. Yeah. Being, you know, coming up in the amateurs, yep. being, you know, cool. You know, we fought as pros. Um, you know what I mean? We stayed cool. And, um, you know, Mike, his, his, his right-hand man, is. we all just been, like, together. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, during the pandemic, people started getting, you know, they needed to get active. They needed to get fights and stuff. So, you know, I was doing stuff in Mexico. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, Sam, you know, Mike, you know, we just got to talking. Sam fought a couple of times and Dusty went out there with Donnell. And yeah, one thing led to another. And it was like, let's do something in D.C. And. We put our heads together. We, you know what I mean? Put our contacts together and we just got it done. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, I think the first time I met you, I was with Dusty and Mike. We were in Atlantic City that pretty, I think it was, I think it was the car that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, I want to say, um, we had the heavyweight from here fighting on it. We fought Brian, Brian Jennings up there in Atlantic City. And it was Seth Mitchell. Seth Mitchell and Brian Brian Jennings fought. All and, right, all and, right. And it, was two, it was 2012 when that happened, man. And um, I, then you know, of course, you started doing your thing. Both you and Dusty was young, you know, young at the time, fighting, you know, starting to fight out at the time in 2012. Right. And pretty much, you put a lot in the mix, man. Since then. Hey man, I did. I mean, I've been doing the best I could. You know what I mean, I've yeah. been doing the best I could. Trying hey, to chop chop. Welcome to the welcome to a chop chop. So we got so right right now we got one of the about feature bouts on the card on the 29th. The Marcus Chop Chop mm-hmm. Corley gonna be facing, of course, Cornell Hines up top on the left there. But they uh um, yo yo go ahead. Hey, so so Thomas, how did this match up? How did how did you finagle the two local guys to face each other? Um, so shit, how'd it happen? We was on the phone, right? So it's crazy. So, you know, though unfortunately, you know, I was talking to Buddy Harrison, Dusty yeah. Harrison, right? And uh-huh. we and we just got the we just got to talking and you know, Dusty obviously, you know, he had to, you know, pull off due to some personal reasons or whatever. Okay. So I was like, Well, sh- damn, like, because just the day before we had lost Fen Law Mang, which was the, the, the Chinese uh, number one contender, rated number yeah. one in the IBF. Mm-hmm. We lost him. I'm like, man, and it's like, yo, we're not having, so like, the biggest issue, I'm not going to lie, the biggest issue we had was Chop's opponent was going to be Lin with Dozier. Okay. And, but him, he's, he's been fighting light heavyweight recently. Yeah, 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 he's, and, yeah, he's been moved up. And so, you know what I mean, it was like, I'm like, listen, man, that shit not going to happen. I just know it's not going to happen. So like, we just started putting our heads together. I swear to God, I literally went like, Bro, why don't why don't we just do Cornell and Chop? Why not? <laughs> that ad, like literally, just like that. Why not? And Dust wow. and so Dust and so Dusty's like, and Ch- like y'all, I'm not I'm not exaggerating. Dusty's like, he thinking about it. He was like, nah, <laughs> damn, y'all be a good fight, but nah, wait, what? Yeah, I was like, nah. I was like, Chop ain't going. He was like, Chop ain't going to do it. I'm like, bro, what you mean? Like, I, I, I me personally, I, shit, I don't think Cornell will do it. <laughs> so real shit. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm like, well, shit. Let's let, let's let's see what happens, right? So then, bro, that ass like one thing led to another. Um, Jesse called Cornell. I called Chop, and I was like, Chop, listen, man, like it's gonna be like boom, boom, boom. I asked him. I said, what you think about Cornell? I asked Chop, what you said, Chop? He was like, yeah, he a good kid or some shit like that. He was like, we're like old school. He was like, yeah, he a good kid or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I, was I, like, said, right. I said he good. I said he good, but I, I wouldn't fight him because I don't think they would want to do that in the DMV for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, we discussed that fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Cornell, yeah, so Cornell, like, how how do you feel about that, man? Oh what? Well, uh when Dusty called me? Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, when Dusty first called me, right? I was like, nah, I ain't I ain't it don't make sense. You know, we both from War Seven. Our neighborhoods ain't too far from each other, you know. I'm 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 a 58 here in Kennewer. We we got a lot of mutual people. Like I got friends that tell me, you know, they related to him. So mm-hmm. it's like I was like, nah, I ain't. And then he called me again. He was like, man, we can't find an opponent for you and Chop. Like, what's up? So I'm like, man, I'm like, all right, fuck it. 
you know, like <laughs> we're gonna take this chance. Yeah, that's how, that's, that's how I looked at it. So I got you guys on 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 the Zoom together, but uh, what's 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 the fighter mentality between you guys when it comes to well, Chop Chop? I know your answer. You've been doing this for so long, man. You told me you look, Chop. You told you called me back in 2015, man, and you told me to say, Juan, this is my last fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna retire, and that was like October. And next thing you know, you were fighting in December, man. That same that same year, and you still been fighting. <laughs> So, <laughs> hey man, you you know what? You ain't gonna make it in the Hall of Fame. You keep fighting, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, my mentality is just like you know. I ain't. I just want to test myself, push myself to the limits. Uh -huh. I don't want to be. I don't want to be a scared fighter. I don't want to be a fighter that just fought all cab drivers. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I want to test myself to be great. Honestly, yeah. that's my that's my mentality. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people, they got some negative thoughts when it comes to, you know, you fighting a veteran like Chop and everybody, yeah. they, they re, Chop, they re, everybody remember you as that guy in your early. I mean, you fought them all. You know, you fought Mayweather, Madonna, Matisse. You, I mean, you fought all those guys, man. And, and then now, you know, I'm not sure if they're trying to look past you because of your age and, and that they think that you shouldn't be fighting anymore. And then all of a sudden they put you in with Cornell. Cornell, what's the response? You were getting when when people would say you were fighting when you were telling people you were fighting chop chop. All right, so I got I'm gonna say the good first. I got two people that was like, nah, you know he a vet, veteran, he's savvy, you know he still got his punches, you know his power, whatever. But then the rest of the people, you know, it just it just showed it just showed DC for real for real, what DC was like, you know, a lot of hate, a lot of hatred. I had people tell me, you know, like why are you fighting chop? He old. That's too easy. And I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, how? You know, like, me and his son had to talk about this the other day at the gym, man. Right? Like, people people going to hate, you know, in D.C. That's 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 what they do. People, people said that, you know, that, that Chop 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 lost it, his speed, you know, his, his equilibrium off, just different things that people people even told me, like, if I lose, don't even come, don't even fight no more. Like, and I'm like, how you going to say that? Like, I. People, people hating on both of us for real, for real. Yeah. I, I feel like this is gonna be the best fight on the card. For real, for real. I feel like it should be the main event because you know we we the only fighters that you know that that really got a name in the city. You know his name known in the boxing and my name just known in the area just yeah. just from being a Washingtonian. So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like, got well, I got I got both of you guys on on here with me, but but, but Thomas, tell me about the, the the whole entire card, man. You got the. The WBC, uh, what is the Continental American Championship on the on the on the line? Tell tell me yeah. about that. Well, yeah, I, and also right. I, I'll go see Kobe Abreu tomorrow. I'll be doing an interview with him tomorrow, so that no, that'll be coming on. up. So yeah, the main event's headlined by by Kobe Abreu. You know what I mean? For, facing a really tough like yo, I'm starting to become a fan of like like dealing with Suleiman Sagawa, man. Like mm -hmm. I'm starting to really become a fan of his man and. Even that fight, yo, like, we yeah. got lucky with that fight. Like, we're, we got two locals, both from Maryland, like, not too far from D.C. Yeah. Um, um, and they both just said, yeah, like, we was looking for a main event because, you know, like I said, uh, our, our last – so we, we were supposed to have a card on September 4th. There was a lot of, you yeah. know, it was a lot of um, technicality issues. We had uh, – our main event was DeMar Nicholson yeah. against DeCarlo Perez, which is going to be a good fight. But then, like, when that got pulled – and then we and we moved on to this man. I said, "Yo, we need to come out heavy." And so, you know, our main goal. So obviously, and we, and, and we were su successful of getting Jalil Hackett on the card. Yeah. I was. I've been dealing. I've been dealing with his manager, Derek Kirk. Man, shout out to Derek Kirk, man. Yo, he, yeah, Derek is cool. He, he be he, he be coming in clear. That's my guy. Yeah. And um, you know, we got to talk about Kobaya, and then we were just looking for opponents, and it was crazy. Nobody wanted to fight him. Nobody wanted to fight him. It was crazy. Like I want yeah, to do Kobe, Kobe, yeah, Kobe's one of those fighters, man. That he's actually about to hit the mainstream, you know, based on you know his performance. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, yep. I, like, and like, I can't really speak about what he got going on next, even though with Derek telling me, but it's, it's huge. It's huge. You know what I mean? And then um, but fight, I'm telling you, man, I'm really a fan of Sagawa, man. Yo, he's yeah. just such a cool, weird. He's just like a weird, cool cat. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, but and yeah, you know what I mean? So, but um. You know, it's a, a, a real good fight. WBC Continental America's title on the line. Yeah, you know I mean, um, shout out to WBC for 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 allowing them. You know, them two young. I don't want to even say young because they're older than me, but 
You know what I mean? In in their in their stage, you know what I mean, I'm in their um, career, I'm, lost their careers, yeah. Uh, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So like that, them two young fighters to, to get a uh, a shot uh, of you know changing their life, and that's kind yeah. of something I want to touch on about Cornell as well with this with this situation. Um, um, you know, you got to condone that that man for for tr- just wanting to be great. You know what I mean? Me, just I could do I could just put the promote take the promoter hat off and just talk as a fighter for like five yeah. seconds. I got 37 pro fights now. Um, and it took 37 times, you know, 37, 36 guys to fight for a world title. Yeah. This man's fighting a former world champ and 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 a future Hall of Famer, um, um, seven fight out. You know what I mean? You gotta condone that man for trying to be great. And that's yeah. why, you know what I mean? When people look at the card and, and they look at that fight, and yeah, we push in that fight just as much as we push in the main event because of exactly. of, of of the hype that's behind it. Um, um, you get, really got to look at it, and and you can't hate on either side, and even on chop exactly. side, you got to condone that guy for for taking on a young lion. Yeah, you know I mean that's you know what I mean. Chop know what he is. Chop exactly. know what he was. Chop know what he's going to be in the future. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know what I mean. Uh, I truly feel it's a crossroads for Chop, and I truly feel that it's uh, you know what I mean this could change Cornell's life. Period. Yeah. He's young. He got six fights, man. It's going to seven fight find a find a former world champion. Yeah, a win. You know what? What will a win do for him? I mean, that will catapult catapult him to bigger purses. Catapult. You know, I mean, um, um, his life just in general. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a business. It will. It will. It will you know what I mean, that's marketing behind his business. You know what I mean, like, there's so many different things that, like, you know, what I mean, people don't get these opportunities a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I really condone both of them, um, um, for just stepping up and and not only wanting to be great but for you know also being a team player with the card too you know what i'm saying because yeah, don't, trust yeah. and believe i we, we you know what i mean we was very very upfront saying yo this will this will really help us out as well and they all took that you know what i mean to heart i really gotta yeah. give nothing but love and respect to both of them for that you know what i mean yeah and and, and corner i'll tell you this i seen a whole i seen plenty of cards where the the talent level of some fighters i saw fighters that shouldn't have been in the ring you know it's like they you, thomas i'm pretty sure you, you you've seen the same thing it looks like they pull guys off the street corner to come fight sometimes you mm, know right. but but this is what i say to you i don't i would ignore the people that call a certain fight like a like a bum fight or you take that fight at it because to step into that ring man it takes a lot of heart man so and okay. and and for you, for the people to tell you that you shouldn't lose to this guy, this guy should be easy. Chop Chop, people know what Chop Chop has done, you know, yeah. in the sport. And he's well beyond that guy who came off the street corner, the fight that, that the fight, was, the, the person that they should tell you should win. He's well beyond that and past that. And, yeah, and I don't see can I say something more? Can I say something? Yeah. That's crazy you said that too, right? Uh-huh. So it's funny how I'm going to keep it a whole bean, right? Yeah. <clears throat> it's so, <clears throat> it's crazy. Cornell on some real shit, he, he, this this fight was supposed to be like a one-two punch, get out. Give me my check for uh-huh. him. This is a comeback. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 100%. For Chop, I got to con- do because for Chop, Cornell way harder, and I'm not. I'm not going to even talk about Lemo Doja, but way harder than anybody that he would have had to get in the ring to because of who he was, who he is. And it's about a young, and, hungry and, fighter. And it's yo. So that's why I'm like, hold up. Now, now I'm thinking more like, yo, that's just it's crazy. They both stepping up to the plate and they making it. You know what I'm saying? And and what also too, what I gotta say about Chop, right? Because I feel like I'm not giving too much love to to this OG of mine, right? This guy done forgot more than what I know than what. Cornell probably knows in in the ring. You know what I'm saying? This man done forgot more than what the hell we know. You know what I mean? So like that's why yo is so intriguing, man. But but then there's that question, Chop. Which Chop's gonna show up? Hmm. You 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 home? We all know what happened last time when you beat the shit out Daryl Tyson. Last time you was home. <laughs> I do I do my homework. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good segue. So Chop, what's what's in store, man? Oh. Hmm. Uh, I'm excited, man. Just to be fighting back at home. I got to put on for the city. It's, it's turn up time. Yeah. I mean, I take my head off to Cornell. I appreciate him accepting to fight me. No, no love lost. It's business at the end of the day. I'm going to perform. I'm going to have a good night. 
and the DMV gonna say, man, that motherfucker still got it. Mm -hmm. Cornell, how you respond to that? And uh, honestly, I, I just feel like I'm gonna do my thing, honestly. That's how I feel, you know, from day one, when the, when the lady first hit me, he was like, man, child talking shit. He said this and that. I'm like, man, I ain't, I don't be on that type of stuff. Like, I ain't with all the pushing and all that shit talking for real. Of course, I had to talk a little bit of shit because child started going crazy. He started posting endless posts every day. I was like, okay, I got to say something. But I ain't, honestly, I just, I'm going to just show up to fight for real. I'm going to show up in shape, ready. Like, like I told you earlier before they came in, I'm sitting outside the gym now and about to, Get another workout in, so like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not coming with a light mentality that I'm fighting an opponent or I'm fighting an old man. Yeah, I'm coming in it with the mentality that I'm fighting the world champion. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I, I, that I got, I got to do, I got to do more than what I did in the past. You know. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I, I hear Cornell says he heading to the gym. I'm not even gonna ask Chop about training. We, we see Chop training all the time. Chop. Train is still the same, man, or have you slowed it down a little bit? Man, I'm still turned up, man. I'm about to run the city tomorrow morning, six o'clock. I'll be all through DMV, Benning Road. Yeah. Man, I'm all over the city, putting in the miles, man. Okay. My my spawn, we done boxing. Okay. It's just wind down time now, just staying loose. I yeah. was in Buddy's gym. I was over old school today. Okay. Shook out, shadow box, jump rope, hit the bag. Now I'm just relaxing, getting ready for six o'clock morning run. Then I'm gonna go back in the gym tomorrow. Don't run too much weight thing. off, man, because you've been you've been doing some running. You be dropping some pounds, boy. Yeah, I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas, you know what? Um, I think I asked you this earlier. What brought you down to uh to um DC? But you you were doing some good things up in Jersey, man. Atlantic City at, at the Showboat, and it was, mm -hmm. it was a Showboat a lot, right? It was a Sobo, Claridge, this sort of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell tell us a little bit about uh Rising Star Promotions. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, look, Rising Star Promotions, you know, it started, it really all started um after I took yo, it's crazy, yo. Like I'm winless against uh DMV fighters as a pro. It's crazy. Uh when I when I lost to uh my first my first L, I lost to action, Antoine Douglas back oh, in yeah. 2000, shit, 2012 or 13, some shit. And and after that, you know, I mean, I got released by my promoter, uh, Russell Peltz, and he, uh, you know, I had a, I had a little bag on me now, so I, I just said, listen, I got some experience. I'm just going to take it on my own now, and it all started just to move my career along, and then it got me up to a point where I ended up fighting Dusty, and we fought for a USBA title, and and um, he beat me in that, and and I just kept it pushing. Yeah. doing promoting shows fighting on them keeping myself busy and eventually got me to a world title and 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 yeah you know i mean um that's what you know, i mean that's really what it's all about just giving myself and young fighters uh opportunities um um to elaborate more on why i came to, to dc not only with the friendship and the relationship with dusty and mike dc's a fight town you know what i mean like it's it's, it's a it's, it's a big fight town boxing yeah. popular in dc yeah. boxing is real popular in dc and that's why i knew that you know what I mean? If we got over the line with this fight here with Cornell and Chop, it wouldn't be it would not be a hard sell. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, my, my motto is with with uh with Rising Star, we don't promote fighters, we promote fights. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like and this is like um um a great um example of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like anything anything could be done, even like with the main event, Breedy and Sagawa. It's like that's a real good fight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like a yeah. real good fight and stuff. Uh, and uh, other fighters on the undercard, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Uh, with, like with Jaleel Hackett, you know what I'm saying? He's fighting a guy with damn near 15 fights, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Donnell Poe, I believe he's fighting another one and old kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, we promote, you know what I mean, actual fights and stuff. And that's what Rising Star is really all about, just giving back, try, trying to give back, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, and, and just bring boxing to wherever we go. Yeah. You know and and uh, I, I was about to ask you about that because a lot of promoters, you know, they sign fighters and they try to get their move their fighters up because the fighter becomes their bread and butter. But then they don't concentrate on putting on great shows, you know, mm -hmm. and when you it's disappointing to go to a card where, where the, the, the card is is stacked, but the quality of fights aren't that good, you know. Right. And, and, so, and that's and I'm glad to hear that. That's what you concentrate on putting on great uh, fights. And not you know shows and not fighters, you know what I'm saying? As far as 
building them up and all that type of stuff because you give them an opportunity to to build themselves up on the shows that you put on based on the, you know their talent based on their matchups and things that to give them chance to sh- give them the chance to shine I, yeah no i agree and that's crazy like there was a time and cornell probably know what i'm talking about there was a time yeah, like where i didn't like i had i go whole slew and it was like a time where like i kind of wanted to i wanted to be that dog i wanted to be that guy you know what i mean mm-hmm. running shit we're like yo like boxing it's like it's hard like you don't want to run shit you want to you know what i mean and for what if, if you especially if you, if you really can't do it you don't have the means to do it why you want to tie people up man that's yeah. why i, I yeah. tried signing people it, and if it didn't work out it just didn't work out you know, yeah. you know what i'm saying i tried to but yeah. like still to this day i had one i'm sorry i had two guys under my under my my stable that i put my my heart behind and shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean and um uh, they're no longer with me for for one, you know, what I mean, one fighter is still a great friend of mine. He's doing tremendous. His name is uh, Nahir Albright. They call him Wu from Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. He um, um he didn't fall. Oh shit! I was just on Triller. He he beat the dog shit out of somebody on, on Triller. He 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 doing some. You know, he's just doing big things. I had this other kid, Donald Smith, uh, from Philly. You know what I mean, yeah. doing good things. I wish him the best. And other than than that, you know what I mean, I just been promoting shows and and giving yeah. fighters platforms. Well, I'm glad you came down here, Chop Chop. So, so man, after this fight, what, what's 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 up with you, Chop? You gonna wait for another call, man? Oh, I'm gonna stay ready. I'm gonna stay ready. Okay, but realistically, my goal, my goal, go ahead. My go goal ahead. is to tap out. My goal is to tap out ninety professional fights. Mm. Oh. Ninety. So you're at, like, you're, you're at eighty Wait. now, right? No. Next Friday to be eighty six. Eighty six. Wow. Man, so how you gonna go get them fights, man? This late in your career, you you they 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 respect you. They respected you well on this one. So uh, you don't you don't get you ain't gonna get too much respect when it comes to to guys trying to match you up. I'm gonna let my performance next week show everyone that he's still dangerous. He's a threat. You better be careful who you pick and choose to put him in there with. At 135, 140, I'm still out there hunting. What's what is this about matched up at? What 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 147, 140? 47. 47. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So so Cornell, since you've been back training, man, how 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 is everything going as far as you getting back everything, in shape? It's been going great, honestly. Like uh I usually try to stay big. Mm-hmm. And, and come down, you know, like the average uh, fighter that's big for okay. their weight. Uh-huh. Yeah, I try, I try to stay big, and then I got it like a um, basically the same thing. Mike Fox and a lot of other Earl Spence. A lot of people use to lose their weight at the last minute. Um, okay. to stay hydrated, to stay healthy, to stay strong. Um, I've been doing great. Uh, working on sitting down a little bit more on my punches. I got, I got Ham Johnson back training, helping me. So I got it. it it been going great, really. A lot of people don't know that's that's like my that's that's my real family. And yeah, we're not just you know like trainer. We really have the same family members. Uh, you know, having my mom, my cousins, and uh, two shop and everything. But yeah, I got a lot. I got a lot of great people helping me for real. I'm not gonna name everybody, but I got a lot of people behind the scenes. That's good. That's really really behind me, helping me sit down on stuff. I yeah. got a lot of great great spawn. I had a great spawn. Your 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 um you got like what is your seven fights under you now? Six. Six fights. So this is your seven yeah. coming up. So how, how old are you going now? 28. 28. So now you got you're going into your seventh fight, you're 28 years old. Have you set a realistic goal for yourself as far as your career? You know what I'm saying? You give yourself a time frame if you if you haven't gotten to a certain level or stage in your career with what, what you were going to do? Yeah, yeah, I definitely, definitely set a uh, time frame. Um, Sorry. Honestly, I'm, I, I got over the past year, past three years, I've been uh, more business minded. So I've been really uh, focusing on like getting, getting more assets for, for building more companies to the point where um, I don't even have to box, you know, I, okay. I can help somebody else that boxes, you know, okay. I can just focus on my businesses. Okay. Uh, actually, Gary Russell Jr. Uh, he started me out thinking like that, like years ago. He was telling me about his real estate. He was like, "Man, I don't really 
care about boxing. That was exact words. He said, man, I want to focus on my businesses. He was telling me why he fight, yeah. the amount of times he fight, you know? And I was like, all right. Then, then like, the last three years, I've just been just thinking about what he said. And yeah. I, I've been just building. Like like Thomas said, I got a um, landscaping company now, and I'm working on a trucking company Yeah. that I should hopefully be had. I should have started by December. I got different things that I want to do, though. Yeah. That's a good mindset, man, because I, I always try to tell fighters, man, fighting only lasts, a, a good fighter can last 15 years. Right. Uh, the average fighter you can put in, if you, if you, if you, if you completely, you know, active, you can put in maybe 10 years and you can start at 17, 27 years old. By the time a fighter is like 30, 35, you know, if they, if they yeah. made a lot of money, they can, they can start some businesses, man, you know, and, and put away some yeah. money. And invest like you're doing yourself, uh, Thomas, with your own investing yourself, to, you know, into the sport or whatever the adventure may be. But and that's at 35. You know, the average person that works out here, they got to they got to work up to like 65 years old. You know, mm. so my thing is a fighter who has the opportunity and the ability to make that money early on. You know, they can invest and have a good re retire early at 35 and be able to invest. But that's the ones my goal. That, the ones who wasn't fortunate to make the money in boxing and, and become older and not be able to fight anymore, they're 35 and shooting. They still got another 30 years to figure out what they're going to do to survive and take care of their families and things like that's that. That's my goal. That's my goal, at least like 35. I read a lot of books too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I read a lot of books and I uh, I look at a lot of different uh, people as mentors to learn yeah. from. So, that's my goal about 35. Don't have to be doing this. Hopefully, yeah. before that, honestly. So close. And, and Juan, and yeah, Juan, let me say this, right? So like, and you know, it's crazy because like, that's again, that and that's why I gotta condone Cornell for wanting to be great. You know what I'm saying? To like, sp speed that up. You know what I'm saying? We just got past. We still in, but we kind of got past. Like, we able to have fights and shit. Uh, a pandemic. You know what I'm saying? And I got really gotta condone that. But yo. It's crazy, and I don't want to keep like focusing around me. But like, obviously, I have personal experience. I, I have experience with with certain things. Mm -hmm. This vibe I'm getting from Chop, I swear to God, is reminding me of when I just fought Eric Sandy Lara, and I'm in here. <laughs> I'm the young gun, and I'm listen, and I'm and I'm and I'm the young gun, and I'm real excited. And this to change my, I had it's my change my life tour, right? And yeah. and and he he just quiet, talking talk like this. Just, he just quiet, man. <laughs> He, yo, he just quiet. Yo, that's just dangerous. And we all know what happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm listen. I, I ain't gonna put myself down, but like we all know yeah. what happened. Yeah, that's so just, what happened. Yo, yeah. that that's just dangerous. You feel me? Yeah. That's why, yo, that's why it's so intriguing. Like I don't know. Like I don't yeah, know. He, he had that. He had that I don't quiet. Know. Hey, that's the quiet storm, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and that's, that's that. I don't know, look, man. I, I mean, he, I mean, I, I respect. I respect Cornell. I, I appreciate him doing what he's doing in the sport of boxing. He's trying to develop more business, so he ain't got to do this shit long term like I have done it for two decades almost. I mean, this this talk, nothing new. Talk, talk your shit, chop. Talk your shit, hey, man. Hey, Go ahead. To, hey, to add to it, chop. Hey, to, me, to add to it, chop. Look, name some of the shit, guys man. that you <laughs> fought, man. <laughs> name some of them. Thomas, 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 you know I'm, I'm not a shit talker. All I say, like like James Baker, Sean Johnson, Lil Adam, we all from the same crew. When one fight, we all fight. If Baker fight, I'm going to fight. If Sean fight, Baker going to fight. It's a fight. At the end of the day, Cornell, he's from the DMV. It's, it's his city. It's my city. But the old man, which everybody keeps saying, chop old, chop old. The only thing old about me is my money. I'm mm. not old when it comes to getting in that damn ring. I can do this shit. And I'm going to show, ain't, ain't got nothing to do with Cornell. I'm going to show the DMV, man, that motherfucker been doing this shit for over 25, 30 years. What the fuck, he, what is he taking? I'm not taking nothing. I just take care of my body at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of fighters can't say they had 30, 35 years of, of pro experience, man. Of box, or just boxing, period. 
That's a lot of experience. So, so Thomas, let's end, let's end it with you, man. To promote this card, tickets still available. Yeah, but they run, but they going. Like, so we obviously we had it. Like, that's very cliche, very cliche, but it's honest. But I'm being dead ass. You know what I mean? Like, um, as so ESA, like we we got set up for three thousand. Um, we we on our way there. You know what I'm saying? We definitely on our way there. It's a big big arena, but it's a big event. You know what I mean? We yeah. we bring in a, a a big night of boxing. It's the first of four of the Beltway Battles. Wait, I'm going to go. Get away from my yeah, car. My fault. Right. You know how people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we are, um, I mean, one of four of Beltway Battles. And you know, shout out to Events DC. Shout out to Millions.co for, for uh, backing it, streaming it. You know what I mean? Or being a partner with us. Yeah. And uh, you all, all the sponsors. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank all the fighters. And um, I'm really looking forward not only to this fight. Um, um, but the whole card, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I said, it's, 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 it's dangerous, man. It's, 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 it's a, the dangerous vibe when you, when you dealing with a, with a, with a, with an old killer, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you got that old, that old slick, but then you got the young gun, you know what I mean? Who feel like he got something to prove, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Or he may not, you know what I mean? I don't know, but you know what I mean, like this fire changes life, period, point blank, period, point blank. This shit changes his life, no doubt. And yeah. chop, you know what I mean? It, it, it can as well, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you know, it can as well. But I mean, we all know. I mean, um, um, Chop. I don't think is in a, in a win win situation. People, people. I know people who say he's supposed to beat Cornell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like he's supposed to. And um, and, but God forbid. You know what I mean? If 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 we lose, and 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 how we were to lose, it's like yeah, uh, Chop. You know what I mean? But that's that's why it's called boxing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get to. I, I'm looking at. The, I'm looking at the screen now. Let's get to these. Let's get to. I chopped. I know yours, but I want you to tell yours. Cornflake. Where you get cornflake from? Oh man, you know off of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, 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 the only white guy on the whole show, bro. Cornflake, with the cows, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, I, I've been I've been in boxing since I'm nine years old. Yeah, you know I mean, nine years old. I'll be thirty next month, and so it's it, you know it's, it's a minute. I had my first fight at, at eleven, at eleven years old, right? So, uh -huh. um, and it was around like when I was 10 ish, I believe 10 or going on 11. Okay. Um, uh, my man, Brian, who, uh, you know, still to this day, my, one of my best friends, um, said I look like cornflake off of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, man. <laughs> God damn. And that shit stuck with me, man. Oh, okay. Chop, chop. Tell me, tell, me, tell me the story, man. Uh, man, 19, I think it's like 1986, 87. Mm -hmm. National Silver Gloves, Nashville, Tennessee. Hold on for a second. 19 what? 1986 or 87. Cornell, Damn. who were you born, Cornell? <laughs> 1993. Damn. Look at that. Damn. There you go. Okay, back. Damn. 1986, 1987. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> National Silver Gloves, Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Got on the scale, I was weighing 65 pounds. Wow. We drove to, we drove to Tennessee. And we all was hungry. Fighters wanted to eat. So they said, okay, we're going to check our weight first before we go out to eat. I checked my weight. I'm right there, 65 flat. My trainer, his name was Kenny Mallard over Kennewood. Uh -huh. He said, all right, we're going to eat. I want you to eat light. So you got to have a salad. And I didn't have the name Chop Chop at the time. They called me Duck. My nickname was Duck. And he said, Duck, you got to eat a salad. I know exactly where we went at. We went to Burger King where they had the salad bar. Mm. So all the group of us, 12 fighters from the DMV, we all out there getting our stuff in line. I ordered salad, went to the salad bar. I fixed my salad. But, you know, the coaches sit with the coaches. The fighters sit with the fighters. Man, I had my salad. I'm eating my salad. Coaches can't see. I went back up there to the salad bar, fixed me a, one of them, them um, Sundays with the banana in the middle, made me a, a, a banana split. Then somebody came with some french fries. I started eating other people's food. I had burgers, french fries, salad, ice cream. I got on the scale the next morning. Uh -huh. He said, okay, you had your salad? I said, yeah, I ate, I ate. I got on the scale. I went from 65 pounds. To 75 pounds <laughs> overnight. He said, What did you eat? I said, I had a salad. He said, What else? I said, some ice cream, some some cookies, <laughs> some french fries, a sandwich. 
He said, I told you to eat light. You ate out of sight. He said, I'm going to call you Chop Chop <laughs> from now on. Now you got to now you gotta move up in weight and fight the bigger guys. I had to move up to 75 pounds. There you go. Yeah. Man. Blew up yeah. 10 pounds, man. Couldn't, couldn't I used resist to can it. Eat. I used to can eat. I don't eat like that no more. Chop Chop. So, Cornell, what's, what's, your, what's your name, Cornell, your, your, your fight name? So I got the name Hit Man. It was it wasn't more so of the uh, fighting ability, but more so of the frame. Mm -hmm. It was something that um, Hammond kind of gave me because of my my build. Uh, coming you know coming into the weigh ins, one forty 140, one forty seven. I'm always looking like the bigger guy, so it just oh, yeah. it kind of just gave me that name off of that. Oh, okay. It's off the, the frame, honestly, of the uh the build. All right. Uh. So there you have it, guys. One of the matchups. The mark so, is chop so, chop, Coley. <laughs> What's that so, chop? So the, so the hit man is coming to take out the chopper. <laughs> oh man. That's good. That's good, chop. That's that's what it's looking like, man. You might have to you might have to tweet that out or something, man. Put that on social media. <laughs> that that should be your next, that should be your next post on something. I right, appreciate you guys, fam, for coming chop. on. Looking forward to next week. I appreciate week. you, Ron. No, yeah. Ron, I appreciate you and your support. Yeah, thank appreciate you. Appreciate you and your support, no doubt, man. Thank you for giving, you know I mean, not only us, the uh, the promotion team, but like, you know, the, again, the fighters, the platform, just to uh, talk they shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, thank next you. Next time, thank they, they got to talk heavy, man. I'm, yeah. I, I ain't, listen, but see, I could I could get this one because it's respect. You feel me? I, I it's, it's, it's a history, you feel me? So yeah. I could kind of, yeah. but there's a history of me and Dusty, too, and I just talk hella shit. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. I mean, no, nah, if, if it was somebody but, from out of town, I would, I would, I, I, I wouldn't have been talking shit. I just, you know, oh yeah. At the end of the day, Chop Chops, you know, he he out our world champion. You know, uh, hundred percent, hundred percent. It just like, but, but, I wasn't. But y'all never. Like I told Emily, I ain't, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't 100%. doing that. Y'all, y'all never known me. Y'all never known me to talk shit. Like that. Right now, you're right. No, you know, you're right. You're right. So that's all right. So I'm gonna get shit. I'm gonna man, shit. I'm gonna see what's up with Mark Kelly Jones or something. I'm gonna, I gotta get Young Jalil on some shit, man. I, yeah, you know what I mean, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell his opponent to say some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean, talk spicy. I like that. I do like that spicy talk. Yo, yeah. yo, Cornell, we gotta get, we gotta get them on a uh, 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 flat and uh, Zab Judah shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we got. Hold on, hold on. We gotta, we, 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 we gotta talk see, spicy, man. But see, some sometimes when that shit talking get to going, fighters they get in their feelings. They do. They don't, know to, they don't know how to control that shit. And then come way in time, they be taking it to another level. That's yeah. why I'm like, look. It, it becomes I mean, real. It. it becomes real. Yeah, I don't have yeah. <laughs> that. Hey, that's that right 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 pushing and all that shit. I don't. That's I right my yeah. Nah, yeah. man, that's right on my alley. Shit. People yeah, on and stuff. Like, man, I, I, I believe men supposed to respect men. And right. like, I don't, I don't believe in all that stuff. Like, that's going on nowadays. That's why, I, that's that's mainly why I don't really talk shit. Yeah. Then I ain't trying to be the nigga that, I ain't, I mean, I, I ain't trying to be the person either that talk <laughs> shit, talk shit and get their ass with either. Like, <clears throat> you know, like I don't never want to be that person. So I always just come in, just being humble, just, just come in the fight for real. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Like I said, yo, in, in this case, it's almost like a must to be, you know what I mean? Um, paying homage, you know what I mean? Um, I'll put it like this, yo. Chop ain't have to do this, you know what I mean? True. Chop ain't have to do that. Do this, you feel me? That's why, yo, it's 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 all love and respect on my side. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to be a promoter self fight, bro. Man, I love to fight. At, at the end of the day, I love to fuck fight. Fuck that shit. No doubt. That's what he said. That yo, one, that was his words, man. I just want to fight. Suck it. Yeah, just no just doubt. just let me do it. <laughs> no doubt. But man, I appreciate you guys, man. Fight fans, when I post this up, you guys are gonna be able to see it, but you know, go support boxing. That's what we say. Right. Like. Just support boxing, man. Support the fan, the fans. Let me support the boxers, the promoters who put on these shows, man. It, it takes a lot to put on these shows and things like that. So go out there and support these fighters in this in these shows, man, and keep boxing alive, especially during this pandemic. You know, right. the fighters don't get the opportunity to fight like they should because only. You see the, the ones that they want to see, they put on television and then the rest of everybody else is left in the back burner. So it's good to have a local car come back, you know, so the local guys can get back to action. And that's going to be October 29th. That's a Friday night. Mm. 
at, mm-hmm. the, at the Entertainment and Sports Arena, and that's going to be at 1100 uh, Oak Drive in Southeast Washington, D.C. That's the old, uh, what is that, the old um, St. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Center, and now it's the current home for the Washington Mystics. So, and that's where we're going to be. So I appreciate you guys for coming, and thanks a lot. Thank All you. Right. All right, y'all. All right.